The exponential distribution is one of the most common continuous probability distributions, and that's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer-requested video. I always appreciate those requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. We'll be giving what I hope is a helpful overview of the exponential distribution in this lesson. We'll talk about the probability density function, the cumulative distribution function, the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, and some examples. So let's get right into it. I love this stuff. A continuous random variable is said to be exponentially distributed if this is its probability density function. Remember that the probability density function of a continuous random variable is the function that when integrated from a to b gives the probability of that random variable being between a and b. So that's what a probability density function is, and if a continuous random variable has this probability density function, then it is exponentially distributed. We see here that x is our independent variable, and lambda is what's called the parameter or the rate parameter. So in the probability density function of an exponential random variable, this parameter lambda is constant. We see that for negative values of x, there is no probability. Only when x is greater than or equal to zero do we have something interesting. So what does this here look like? Well, let's head over to our graphing software Desmos and take a look. This is the graph of the probability density function in blue. And you can see how it varies as I change lambda. In this case, we have a standing in for lambda. Here I'm making lambda, or a, get bigger and bigger, and this is what it looks like as it gets smaller and smaller, closer to zero. We can go forward on the x-axis, zoom in a bunch, go forward some more, so that's what it looks like. Exponential distributions are often used to model the time until a particular event occurs, or the time between two events. But before we get into any examples, let's continue speaking in general terms a little longer. We'll say let x be an exponentially distributed random variable with parameter lambda. Remember that is our constant parameter. And we could say this all a lot quicker using this neat notation. This notation means that x is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda. And if this is the case, of course, we know that this is the probability density function of x. But we just went over that, so I'm going to erase it for now. Now let's knock out a couple things I'm sure you're wondering. What is the expected value of an exponentially distributed random variable? Well, of course, it's got to have something to do with lambda, but what exactly is it? Well, the expected value of an exponentially distributed random variable with parameter lambda is 1 over lambda. So that's the reciprocal, or the multiplicative inverse of lambda, lambda to the power of negative 1. And you might also see the expected value or the mean of a random variable written like this, with a mu. So mu is equal to 1 over lambda. Either way, it's the same thing. The notation doesn't really matter. In the interest of time, we're not going to prove this in today's lesson, but we will demonstrate it from first principles in another lesson. But if you remember the definition of the expected value of a continuous random variable, you might be able to prove this yourself, so give that a try. Alright, so this is the expected value of an exponential random variable with parameter lambda. What is the variance of an exponential random variable? Well, it turns out that's pretty easy. The variance of an exponential random variable is just the square of the expected value or if you prefer, the square of the mean. Either way, this is equal to 1 over lambda squared, which is equal to 1 over lambda squared, or lambda to the power of negative 2. And perhaps you remember that the standard deviation of a random variable, which we just write as lowercase sigma, this is equal to the square root of the variance of that random variable. This, of course, in the case of exponential random variables, leads to the beautiful result that the standard deviation is just the square root of lambda to the power of negative 2, which is just lambda to the power of negative 1, which is the expected value of an exponential random variable. So let's recap that all. This notation means that the random variable x is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda. 
the expected value or mean of an exponential random variable is 1 over lambda. The variance of an exponential random variable is the square of the expected value, or the square of the mean, which is just lambda to the power of negative 2. And remember that this relationship between the variance and the expected value, this is a special property of exponential random variables. This is not true of all other distributions. However, it is always true that the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. In the case of an exponential distribution, that means that the standard deviation is equal to the mean, or expected value, which is lambda to the power of negative 1, or like we said earlier, 1 over lambda. All right, now before we get into an example, I'm sure there's something you're wondering. We've talked about the probability density function of an exponential random variable, little f of x, but remember, with continuous probability distributions, we're more interested in the CDF, written as big F of x. This is the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. Remember that with a continuous probability distribution, the probability density function doesn't give us actual probabilities, whereas the cumulative distribution function does. Just to make sure we don't lose track of what we're talking about, we're going to say that x is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda. Remember that the cumulative distribution function of a random variable gives us the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to some value. And in the case of continuous random variables, this is equal to the integral from negative infinity to the value that we're evaluating the cumulative distribution function at. Let's just make that value a so that we're not integrating with respect to a variable that is in our boundaries because we can't do that. So the cumulative distribution function of a continuous random variable x evaluated at a is equal to the integral from negative infinity to a of the probability density function with respect to x. So knowing this definition of cumulative distribution function, let's use it to find the CDF of an exponential random variable. For an exponential random variable, our lower bound does not need to be negative infinity. Remember that for any negative x values, there is zero probability. So we don't have to include those values in our calculation. So we can start with a lower bound of zero. So let's go back down and make that adjustment. So for an exponential random variable, this is equal to the integral from 0 to a of that probability density function with respect to x. Since x is greater than or equal to 0, we can replace this f of x, the probability density function, with this expression here. Because again, x is greater than or equal to 0. So let's go back down and do that. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to a of lambda multiplied by e to the negative lambda x with respect to x. Now we'll go ahead and pull that constant lambda out. So this is equal to lambda multiplied by the integral from 0 to a of e to negative lambda x with respect to x. And then what is this equal to? Well, we have our constant lambda out front. And then to integrate this exponential, we can keep the exponential function the same, but then we have to multiply by 1 divided by the derivative of the exponent. In this case, the derivative of the exponent is negative lambda, so we divide by negative lambda. And then, of course, this integral is being evaluated from 0 to a. Now, of course, we can just pull this 1 over lambda out, and that's going to cancel out with this lambda. So what we'll be left with is negative e to the negative lambda x from 0 to a. So let's go ahead and evaluate this. Not too difficult. We have negative e to the power of negative lambda times our upper bound a, and then minus negative e to the negative lambda times our lower bound 0. And then what is this equal to? We've got negative e to the negative lambda a, so we'll write that here. I prefer to write it as negative e to the negative a lambda. And then we have minus a negative, so that's going to be a plus e to the power of negative lambda times 0. That's e to the power of 0, which is 1. 
So then this is just equal to one minus e to the negative a lambda. And that, my friends, is our cumulative distribution function. Remember, for an exponential random variable, this is the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to a. So it's pretty darn handy. Of course, it's easy enough to do the integral to figure this out in any given problem, but since it's so common, I definitely recommend memorizing it. All right, well, that was pretty fun. I actually don't think I've done an integral on this channel yet, so this is really cool for me to finally be doing. Now let's go ahead and do an actual example. Suppose that the length of a phone call in minutes is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda equal to one over five. If someone arrives immediately ahead of you at a public phone booth, find the probability that you will have to wait A, more than five minutes, and then B, between five and 10 minutes. So we've got two separate calculations to do. Of course, smart way to start a word problem is to jot down the important information. So in this case, we'll let x be our random variable, and x is the length of a phone call in minutes. So we'll just jot that down, and what do we know about x? Well, the length of a phone call in minutes is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda equal to one-fifth. So we know that x is an exponential random variable with parameter one-fifth. And if we remember the stuff we discussed earlier, this also tells us what the expected value of x is. Remember, the expected value of an exponential random variable is the multiplicative inverse of its parameter. So in this case, that's the inverse of one over five, which is five. And then of course, we can also figure out the variance of x. The variance of an exponential random variable is the square of the expected value, which in this case is five squared, which of course, we'll just erase that, is 25. And then lastly, the standard deviation is just the expected value for an exponential random variable. So the standard deviation is five. We actually don't need this information to answer these questions, but I figured I'd point it out. So for starters, we're trying to find the probability that we will have to wait more than five minutes at this public phone booth where someone has arrived immediately ahead of us. The probability that we have to wait more than five minutes is the probability that the phone call of the person ahead of us lasts more than five minutes. And that, of course, is the probability that x is greater than five. And remember that for continuous distributions, whether you have a strict inequality or something like greater than or equal to doesn't make a difference. So this is the probability that our exponential random variable x is greater than five. What is that equal to? Well, if we wanted to do it the long way, we could integrate from five to positive infinity the probability density function of our random variable. And in this case, of course, since lambda is equal to one-fifth, our probability density function for an exponential random variable is one-fifth times e to the negative one-fifth times x, as long as x is greater than or equal to zero. So that's straight from the probability density function that we introduced above. But we don't need to go through all that integration. There's a much easier way to do it. The phone call has to last either more than five minutes or less than or equal to five minutes. So by the law of complement, the probability that x is greater than five is equal to one minus the probability that x is not greater than five, which means that x is less than or equal to five. We wanna write it this way in terms of a less than inequality so that we can use our cumulative distribution function, which remember gives us the probability that our random variable is less than some value or less than or equal to. Remember that part doesn't matter. All right, so that's not too difficult. Let's go ahead and do this calculation. Here is a refresher is our cumulative distribution function. The probability that x is less than or equal to five is equal to one minus e to the negative five lambda. In this case, lambda is one fifth. All right, so that works out pretty nicely. We then have, of course, that the probability that x is less than or equal to five is equal to one minus e to the negative one. And therefore, the probability that x is greater than five, this is equal to one minus the probability that x is less than or equal to five, which is one minus e to the power of negative one, 
Then if we distribute that negative, we'll get that this is equal to one minus one plus e to the negative one, which is just equal to e to the power of negative one. And there's a very nice general principle of exponential random variables that has just exposed itself here, but I'll leave it for you to notice that, and maybe I'll talk about it in another lesson. So for problem A, the probability that we'll have to wait more than five minutes, this answer is simply probability that x is greater than five, that's e to the power of negative one. Which, if we plug into our calculator for an approximation, is about 0.37, very rough approximation. So that's about a 37% chance. All right, now on to letter B, and then we'll call it a day. What's the probability that we have to wait between five and 10 minutes? Well, this is very similar to the example we just did, just a little bit more complicated. Now we want to know the probability that we have to wait between five and 10 minutes. That's the probability that our random variable x, the length of the phone call, is between five and 10. So what exactly is this equal to? How do we calculate this? Well, it's not just equal to the probability that x is less than 10, of course, because this would include the probability that x is less than five, but we want x to be greater than five. So to fix that, we just have to subtract the probability that x is less than five. And this will give us the probability that x is between five and 10. Of course, if you wanted to, you could also use integration to figure this out. But we don't feel like doing that. We already went through the trouble of that so that we didn't have to do it again. All right, so what is this gonna be equal to? Well, remembering our CDF, this is equal to, we'll do the probability that x is less than 10 first. I'll just put that in parentheses. It's one minus e to the negative 10 lambda. Remember in this example, lambda is one over five and then we're going to subtract the probability that x is less than five. So that will be minus the probability x is less than five, which is one minus e to the negative five multiplied by lambda, which is one over five. And then what is this equal to? Well, we've got one minus e to the negative 10 times a fifth, which is negative two, and then just distribute this negative. That's gonna give us minus one plus e to the negative one. And then what's this equal to? Well, we have a positive one minus one, so those will cancel out. Then we've got this positive e to the negative one, which I'll write first, and then a negative e to the negative two. So minus e to the power of negative two. And that, my friends, is our answer for b. The probability that we have to wait between five and 10 minutes is e to the power of negative one minus e to the power of negative two. And again, if you like approximations, that is equal to about 0.23. Again, very rough approximation, about 23% chance. And of course, it makes sense that this probability is less than this probability, because this is a stricter condition. This says that x has to be greater than five, but less than 10, whereas this says that x just has to be greater than five. We also could have calculated this as the probability that x is greater than five, minus the probability that x is greater than 10. This would have given us the same exact result and actually would have been a little quicker if we're comfortable with the neat property that I sort of hinted at earlier. But again, I'll talk more about that in another lesson. With all that said, I think that's a pretty good starting point, pretty good starter for the exponential distribution. Now, let me just give you an example to try on your own. In the interest of time, I'm not going to read this whole example. I'll just point out a couple things. Notice that in this example, you're not given the parameter lambda. Instead, you're given the mean. Note that PDF stands for probability density function, which is what we went over at the start. CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. And then this is just like the problem we just went over. All right, good luck. Let me know how it goes in the comments. And of course, I will leave the solution in the description. So I hope this video helped you understand what the exponential distribution is and a little bit about it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. And be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear There's a light where I float That erases all black It makes
fix everything.